phenoxyethanol. Sounds a little bit intimidating, doesn't it? This is an ingredient that we see in a lot of different natural and organic products, specifically in skincare. And in today's video, I wanna talk about what it is uh, from a chemical standpoint, talk about why it's used in so many products and what you need to know so that you can be a conscious consumer and make proper choices for your health and wellness. So this phenoxyethanol sounds intimidating, but it's actually claimed to be natural. Let's dig into this. If we want to get technical, phenoxyethanol is a glycol ether. Uh, it's an aromatic alcohol and a solvent. And what this all basically means is that when it's put into cosmetic products, it acts as a preservative. It works within a wide range of cosmetic products. This includes different pH levels. pH, potential hydrogen, refers to how acidic or basic a product is. And generally, these two different uh, categories have very, they're very finicky, they're very picky. And just the way someone likes green peas and someone will not get near them, that's kind of how they act when you're really far on the side of the acidic scale or this side of the alkaline basic scale. Now, phenoxyethanol is pretty great because it works a little bit more uh, across the board. And what it does is that it kills bacteria, it kills fungus, and it kills germs that can be within products. Now, this is great. When we think of our cosmetic and beauty products, we don't want bacteria, fungus, mold growing in them. If you open up your fridge and you see a bunch of moldy food, you're probably not going to eat it, right? Same idea applies to skincare. We don't want our skincare going bad. We want it to last a long time. But unfortunately, and specifically for solutions or products that are heavily water-based, a lot of stuff can grow in them. And this is why phenoxyethanol is added. Now, in the past, we used to add parabens as a preservative, but a lot of people got afraid of parabens. And I have to be honest, I used to be afraid of parabens before I understood the research or kind of knew how to make my own decisions and look into things. And parabens are probably not as bad as we once thought they were, which is a good thing but there is still this idea in the industry that parabens are bad. And the truth is that a lot of people are afraid of them. A lot of cosmetic companies say paraben free and that gets you to buy something, right? Um, or it makes it seem safer. So phenoxyethanol was introduced because it was an alternative to parabens. Again, it preserves this product, it works well, uh, and it can be naturally derived or it can be lab synthesized. Now. Let's make this distinction as well. Parabens, although they sound scary and dangerous, they're actually found in fruits and such as berries, so they are naturally occurring. Phenoxyethanol comes from green tea, but uh, it is usually made in a lab when you see it in skincare. Again, it is still considered natural, but I want to remind you that just because something is natural doesn't always mean it's good or safe, and specifically with like asbestos or lead. You know, you don't necessarily want to ingest these things or be around them for long periods of time or breathe them in um, just because they're natural. So when it comes to phenoxyethanol, is this dangerous? Is this safe? There is some information that I think you should know so that you can make your own decisions as a conscious consumer. Again, this phenoxyethanol, it's got this ring, it goes do 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 and it has an OH group at the top. And this structure is very indicative of how it works. Now, again, its main purpose within cosmetics is to kill bacteria, is to preserve this product. But when applied to the skin, it can do inter interesting things. Let's make this distinction that this is also dose dependent. While phenoxyethanol can be dangerous, it can be toxic to kidneys and to bladder, that is if it's ingested. When it's applied topically, it works much differently. Same idea, um, you know, it, look at that 1% line. Phenoxyethanol in, I believe in America and perhaps in Europe, it is forced to be under that 1% line. And the body processes things very differently when they're absorbed by skin versus when they are ingested. So. Phenoxyethanol is generally regarded as safe. Many people like to use it. And again, I don't think it's gonna cause this toxicity. Obviously, don't go drinking it and gulping it. Don't drink your skincare, not a good idea. Um, but when it comes to this specific ingredient, uh, it can cause issues in select people. Again, most people have no problems with it. And I encourage you to turn to learn, turn over your ingredients lists and take a look at them. I bet you you're gonna find phenoxyethanol and you'll realize you've never had a negative reaction to this product. However, if you are someone who has eczema, if you have atopic dermatitis, if you have some inflammatory skin conditions, potentially even rosacea, and you notice that when you put certain products on your skin, the skin gets itchy, it gets red, it starts flushing, or it feels a little bit off, that could potentially be a reaction to phenoxyethanol if it's in the ingredients. 
Now, the reason for this is because, again, as an aromatic alcohol, it does kill a lot of bacteria and a lot of fungi. This could also irritate the skin, the way it evaporates off or simply what it's killing um, when it's applied topically. Now, this does not happen to everyone. I don't think this is an ingredient that people should be afraid of. I simply think it's something you should be aware of. And if you do have these conditions, look at your skincare labels and see if this is an ingredient that is inside of them. Because this could potentially be one of the reasons um, that a specific product makes you feel itchy or feels a little bit weird for you. So at the end of this, what should you look for and what should you know before purchasing a product? I think this is what you should know. Um, we used to demonize parabens, we used to demonize carbs and fats and all of these different chemicals. But remember that chemical doesn't necessarily mean bad or natural doesn't necessarily mean good. Everyone's situation is dependent on their upbringing, it's dependent on their genetics, it's depending on their past experiences uh, and the way, the current state of their skin and their body. When it comes to phenoxyethanol, I want you to be conscious consumers. I want you to look at those labels and see how your skin feels. If your skin feels itchy and red, obviously it's not for you. But if you try it and you have this reaction, you're not gonna be in immediate danger. Again, it's legally has to be under that 1% line. It's not gonna cause liver kidney toxicity. Again, please don't eat it. Um, but if you're looking at products in the store and you're concerned about this ingredient, it doesn't look familiar and you don't know whether or not to buy it, Again, remember that this is generally safe and it's in there to make sure that bacteria and fungus doesn't grow in your products and therefore could do a lot more damage when it comes to your skin. <laughs> so take that as you will. Always be conscious consumers. If you want another video, some ingredient deep dives, you can watch it here. And here's some more information that you might find helpful if you have irritated skin. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.